Eventually, as you write more and more code, you're going to have to separate them into different files. Now, this is mostly for human readability because your computer can read trillions of ones and zeros without making a mistake. For humans, we like to separate things into different sections so that we can focus on one thing at a time. For this example, let's just come up with a simple struct. I'm going to have something called struct player. We might have int, which is HP. I'm going to say default HP is 5. And I'm going to say show HP means see out players HP is HP and the line. The entirety of this game is we create a player and we say player show HP F5. Okay, this is our game. Now let's pretend that we want to tuck this away somewhere. I'm going to right click on my project, go to add new item. I'm going to click on header file and create a file called player. Add. Now we have a file called player.h. Don't worry about this for now. I'm going to get to this in a few minutes. I'm going to go back to my main file here. I'm going to select this entire piece of code, the IO stream as well. Control X to cut it. Go to player.h. Copy paste the whole thing in there. Now if I go back to the main file, we get an error message here. The main file has no idea what the player is, so we got to say include player.h. And I'm going to save everything. By saying this, now all of a sudden our main file knows the exact definition of our player. And of course, if I press F5, okay, we get the same result. Remember I said this is mostly for human readability. This is exactly the same as copy pasting our player code here. And you can say the same thing about IOStream. I'm going to click on it, press F12 to go to definition. I'm going to copy paste this whole thing into our main file. Okay, I'm going to run this, F5. Again, the same result. Now, the thing about IOStream is that it includes a lot more, and it just goes on and on and on. Let me put this back into include IOStream. Let me also put this back into the player, include player. And you don't have to worry about this, but IOStream has got thousands and thousands of lines like this. But most of the time, you don't have to worry about this because we know that when we say C out, we can print something in our console menu, and that's all we need to know. So include just means you're tucking away a certain part of your code into a different file. You can go to external dependencies and look for IOStream there as well. Okay, we see it here. And don't worry about the syntax here, brackets versus quotes. It's just a difference in how or where your Visual Studio searches for these files. And this syntax means you're searching in a certain folder. For example, if I go to properties again, VC++ directories, and here you see include directories. I'm going to click on one of them, edit just to see them. So just to show you, let me copy paste the folder, the folding address. Go there, and I'm going to look for IOStream. Okay, here you see the file. Quotes just means that you're searching for it within the scope of your project, or something like that. I kind of forgot. You can read about it here. I'm going to have all the links below. But really, most of the time, you don't have to worry about this. And now let me talk about this thing. Again, this is something that you don't really have to worry about. You get this by default in Visual Studio when you create a new header file. It's just a fail safe that you follow the one definition rule. You can Google this. It gets really technical, but just out of common sense, it kind of makes sense. Let me explain. Eventually, you're going to have many files and you're going to start losing track of which file includes what. And sometimes certain files are going to include one file more than once. And remember that includes are not all that different from copy pasting. 
So for example, when you have a lot of code, you might end up with something like this. You might have some other file including player, but then you might have another file that might include the same player file. So it might actually look something like this. You might have two structs that look exactly the same. Let me copy paste the function to show HP. Now, just out of intuition, this doesn't make any sense. And Visual Studio is not going to let you compile this. Okay, you're going to get an error message when you try to run this. And you might start updating your code, something like this. Now you have two different definitions for the same thing. It makes no sense, and it's going to break down your entire app. So let me go back to my old code. Include player and say pragma once, which means that you're going to include one file just once. And let me just talk about one more thing. If you've been watching my other videos, you might have seen me do something like this. Namespace round bear games. Put everything in there. A namespace is just something that you can use to divide up your code into logical structures. If I go back to my main file, now that I have namespace, I have to say round bear games player. This is a little too long. Let me change this to RB. Namespace RB. Okay. A lot of times, and especially when you're using something like Unity, a lot of people are going to use the same names for different classes and structs like player or player controller, bullet, enemy. There are really common names in game dev. Namespaces are a nice tool for you to organize your files, but it's also nice so that you don't have naming conflicts. Let me create another header file, for example. Add new item. This is going to be some other object, some obj. And here I'm going to say struct player, but it's going to be slightly different, just some int. Only this time I'm going to use a different namespace some other name, put it in there. Now if I go to main, I'm also going to include some obj. And I can have another player, some name, some other name. And I can still run this at five. Okay, and obviously I'm not going to have two different players, but this player object is not the same as this player object. You can also do this. You can say using namespace RB and skip this part. Just say player F5. Okay, this is going to give you the same result, but I'm not a fan of doing this. I actually like looking at which namespace it comes from. Some people also like doing this using namespace std. Some people like getting rid of this. Okay, same result. But again, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this. I actually find this to be more readable. But really, there's no concrete rule on how you should be organizing your files in code. Most of it, I would say, comes from just going through trial and error, as well as reading other people's code that have been successful before. What you shouldn't do is this. I've seen a lot of unique people do this. For example, when you're looking for a ledge grab, or when you're trying to do a ledge grab, I've seen people write code that looks like this, void get my player and then find the ledge detector, get that, and then you figure out the distance to the ledge. And then once you do, you play some animation, uh, and then and then you when you and then when you when you finish, 
you your your box collider goes up uh, up a certain y and then you play another animation and then when you finish that that is the end and you mark a variable i don't know something obviously nobody names a function like this but essentially it is what the name is more more likely people might have a giant piece of code all mumbled up together and you would have hundreds and hundreds of lines of code that sort of does everything we haven't started talking about structures and patterns yet but start getting into the habit of dividing your code into different modules so that you can separate them look at things one by one fix them update them don't just write a giant piece of let's grab code like this i mean i do this sometimes but try to divide up your code into different modules and different files okay that's it for this video no homework today i'll see you next time